The government says there is no firm estimate on how much oil is spilling into the Gulf as BP calls for backup. World climate negotiators wrap up bond talks with the new draft climate treaty. And while the spill hasn't had much of an impact on oil and gas prices yet, one energy analyst talks about the possible impacts of the drilling moratorium. From the Energy News Center in Washington, D.C., this is the Energy Report with Susan McGinnis. Good afternoon, I'm Susan McGinnis. Thanks for joining us for the Energy Report. 51 days and counting with no end in sight yet to the crude oil spilling into the Gulf of Mexico. The government's point man on the spill says there's still no firm estimate on how much is gushing from the Deepwater Horizon. Coast Guard Admiral Thad Allen gave an update today, a day after a government task force said the well may have been releasing as much as 2.1 million gallons per day twice as much as the government's last worst case estimate. He says officials from NOAA and other agencies are working to refine their estimate and he says it'll be weeks before BP can get enough vessels to the spill site with enough equipment and capacity to capture it all. Many are coming in from the North Sea where producers use capture methods similar to the ones needed in the Gulf spill. The proposal was given to us by BP is an incremental build out of, of capacity, including bringing in production facilities and shuttle tankers that are not normally used in the Gulf of Mexico to the scene. In fact, they're in route right now. So s between the middle of June and the first uh, week or so of July, we're going to start incrementally building out a new mooring system and then production vessels that will be linked to shuttle tankers uh, that can accommodate a greater flow rate. And at that point, once we know we can do that, we will probably shift from a containment cap we have right now to a more hard cap. Uh, which will help us to capture more, if not all, of the uh, oil that's coming out of the wellhead. Well, Allen meets next Wednesday with BP President Tony Hayward and Chairman of the company Carl Henrichs Vonberg, and he expects President Obama to participate in at least part of that meeting. This will be the first time the President has spoken with any BP officials since the Deepwater Horizon exploded April 20th. Elliot Gu from the Energy Strategist is among those who believe the moratorium on new drilling in the Gulf could make waves in the markets. He says the market consensus is that the moratorium could last 12 to 18 months. We talked to him about the impact on the three dozen or so deep water rigs in the Gulf. I mean, if you look at it, um, you know, there's already talk of most of the rigs that are sort of subject to this moratorium being moved out of the Gulf and finding contracts elsewhere, uh, which of course is a, is a big problem for the rig contractors because, you know, those rigs are going to have, you know, force majeure clauses which are going to get them locked out of, uh, you know, their contracts are going to be canceled. Then they're going to have to go to foreign markets and find new contracts. Well, obviously when you have 33, 35 new rigs coming from the Gulf, looking for contracts elsewhere, that's going to be a lot of additional supply in the market. They're never going to get the day rates that they had locked in under long-term deals in the Gulf. Meanwhile, Interior Secretary Ken Salazar says BP's Atlantis oil and natural gas platform in the Gulf should remain in production while MMS does a safety probe of the structure. Regulators are investigating a claim, this was made by a former BP employee, that that rig is unsafe. MMS started the investigation in February after the request of 19 congressional representatives. BP says the Atlantis platform is safe and it is in compliance with federal regulations. The MMS probe should be finished by mid-September. The agency will then decide whether to shut it down. Well, two weeks of global climate talks in Bonn, Germany, ended today with a compromised treaty text that has something for everybody to dislike. Some developing nations protest that it incorporates too much of the Copenhagen Accord and too little of the Kyoto Protocol. Environmentalists say it would give industrialized countries too much leeway in cutting greenhouse gases. But many negotiators did say real progress had been made in crafting compromises on operational aspects of the treaty, and that includes agriculture, forestry, and mechanisms to raise funds for sustainable development. In his final press conference, outgoing UN Climate Chief Evo de Boer stressed that decisions are needed soon. Take all current pledges and plans from all countries and we still won't stop emissions growing in the next 10 years. More stringent action cannot be postponed much longer. As emissions continue to grow, he said mankind's chances of keeping global warming from reaching destructive levels are narrowing and will vanish if action is postponed. Bulgaria says it's pulling out of a pipeline deal to carry Russian oil to Greece because of environmental concerns. Prime Minister Boyko Borisov said that Bulgaria would scrap the project because of resistance from residents of the Black Sea town where the pipeline was due to start. He also voiced concern about the project's possible environmental impact, pointing to the Gulf oil spill as an example. This proposed 175-mile pipeline was supposed to bring Russian oil from Bulgaria to northeastern Greece.
Well, first we learned the Himalayan glaciers may not be disappearing as fast as some scientists had feared. Now it turns out their disappearance may not affect as many people as they thought either. Dutch researchers writing in the journal Science say nearly 60 million people living around the Himalayas will suffer food shortages due to the shrinking glaciers and water supplies. The UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said in 2007 in its landmark report that hundreds of millions of people were at risk. The reason for this discrepancy, the new report says some basins surrounding the Himalayas depend more on rainfall than melting glaciers for their water sources. Those that do count heavily on glaciers, like the Indus and Ganges basins in South Asia, could see their water supplies decline up to 20 percent by the year 2050, they say. Others, like China's Yellow River Basin, the report says, would see more rain from shifting monsoon patterns caused by climate change. Here's a look at some goings on around the Beltway on Monday. President Obama travels to Gulfport, Mississippi, Theodore, Alabama, and Pensacola, Florida to assess the damage from the Gulf spill. 1 p.m., Center for American Progress has a press teleconference to talk about the EPA analysis of the American Power Act. That's the climate bill sponsored by Senators John Kerry and Joe Lieberman. That's the Energy Report. We'll see you again on Monday with your latest energy news. For any suggestions or comments about our programming, you can email us at contact at cleanskies.com, and you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. From all of us here in the Energy News Center, have a good weekend.